Hi guys, this is Frenchie. Today I want to talk about a DCTL that I discovered and actually that uh, the whole internet is um, discovering right now uh, because like just a few weeks ago Darren Mostyn did a video about this DCTL and other creators uh, did it too but I want to bring my brick uh, to the wall because uh, I think uh, this tool is very powerful and uh, could be very useful for your workflow. The tool that I'm talking about is a bunch of DCTLs that are being created by Stefan. Stefan is a color scientist based uh, in Berlin. He wanted to get inspired from uh, best light tools uh, to integrate uh, these um, elements inside a DaVinci Resolve workflow. So what I want to do with you guys is actually creating a look with these DCTLs. Um, I don't want to compare um, what the curves are doing versus what the DCTL is doing because a lot of creators uh, already made this kind of video. Uh, I re really recommend uh, the video from Darren Mostyn uh, about this DCTL. So uh, go check it out because uh, he's doing a real good job to describe uh, the difference between uh, what you can get out of uh, curves and what you can get out from these DCTLs. What I'm gonna do is a uh, look with you guys and um, I have this image where I just uh, done some um, uh, adjustments. Uh, so um, I'm just going to show you uh, where I am in terms of color management. So I've just done a DaVinci Wire GB color manage and I am um, input color space uh, in S-Log3 because this footage is from uh, FX3. And um, the timeline color space uh, is in DaVinci White Gamut uh, Intermediate just because I want to have more room to affect the colors and uh, also to not uh, bring them to a breaking point. Uh, so it's very important to choose actually your color space when you want to do a big adjustments on colors uh, because uh, the broader you are, the better it is. So output color space, uh, yes, uh, it's Rex 9 Gamma 2.4. To integrate DCTL in your workflow, uh, you can open your lot folder. So you just uh, go to your color management and open a lot folder. So you're gonna arrive to your lot folder. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how I copy and paste uh, my DCTLs, but if you want, like what I've done in my lot folder is creating a folder just like dedicated to DCTL. So I'm just gonna double click. And um, I have all my DCTL and for example, the DCTL that I'm uh, talking about is uh, these DCTLs and I just, what I've done is just like uh, copy and paste uh, the uh, folder into uh, my folder DCTLs. So when you have done this, you can close and uh, you have to restart uh, DaVinci Resolve for uh, DaVinci to uh, integrate these DCTLs uh, into, uh, into its uh, OFX. So by looking at the image, uh, I find that um, there's a bit of a life uh, missing. Um, I, I find that the set is already very colorful, but the problem is uh, from uh, my balance, from my HDR and from my uh, color wrapper, I, I couldn't pull out um, this uh, colors that uh, the set um, represent. So um, I'm just gonna start with uh, one DCTL. So to find your DCTL, you're just uh, gonna uh, click to your OFX and um, just type DCTL. And uh, you're gonna have a menu where you can uh, choose all your DCTL. So I have a bunch of it, uh, but I'm uh, interested into uh, the mono DCTL for this video. So um, I'm having actually a mono RGB crosstalk. Uh, so this DCTL like, will uh, allow me to uh, put some colors into uh, colors. <laughs> so uh, put some colors into colors, is, uh, it's more about like, um, having uh, your level of uh, red, green and blue uh, that is shifting a tiny bit uh, to create uh, either more saturation, either more uh, interesting colors or just changing the color. What I'm doing, I'm just going to label that um, cross 
because this is a crosstalk um, and I'm just gonna uh, slide my grid in red and add a bit more red into my image so um, for example um, green in red is just like for example in all my reds either I put more green either I put more red so if you want a representation of uh, this crosstalk it's just like the same as when you take curves and when we do for example the split tone together like if you watch my video and we do the split tone uh, we're just gonna remove some reds like for example from uh, the shadows it's it's almost the same principle but with colors what i want is a bit more red a bit more pop uh, in the colors so i'm just gonna uh, add a bit more red in my red remove green from my red um, and i'm gonna play with the button so this is blue in red so let's see um i want a bit of blues yeah just to have a bit of density and uh what is interesting is like uh in this crosstalk you can raise the saturation a tiny bit so we're gonna raise the saturation but what is interesting uh is actually uh there's a saturation here but we have another dctl uh just dedicated for saturation so I'm going to create another node. So I'm just like keeping my tiny sat at uh, 0 0.083 and I'm just going to create another node um, that's going to be sat. Okay, so I'm going to drop my DCTL and go to my mono saturation and tetrahedral. Um, the T actually in uh, the um, DCTL uh, just represent tetrahedral. Tetrahedral uh, interpolation is only um, another kind of math that you apply uh, to um, handle your contrast most of the time. So um, um, what I like, I like tetrahedral. I'm using tetrahedral quite a lot. Uh, so for example, if you see in my settings, uh, my uh, table interpolation is tetrahedral. And uh, then I want to respect uh, what I've chosen uh, in my uh, settings. So I'm just going to go with the monosat tetrahedral. Now that we have our uh, saturation node, we're just going to play with our uh, saturation per uh, color. What is very interesting for me in this image is obviously these hairdresser machines, right? So uh, I'm just going to uh, try to uh, raise my saturation and if you see when i raise my saturation just for red my red is actually getting deeper it's like uh, the same effect as the hsl coupled with the hsv for uh, saturation uh, i've done a video uh, in the past like quite a long time ago about it um, just check it out uh, you know like to see uh, what is the logic behind this tool is actually pretty uh, useful because sometimes like when you want to saturate an image you don't want like all the brightness to go up let's just keep this frame for saturation and let's just compare to uh, what i'm gonna do with curves like if i go to my curves and uh, i want uh, more saturation into the reds uh, i'm just gonna click my red channel and i'm gonna put more saturation and if you see everything goes up and all the uh, brightness goes up um, which is actually uh, uh, quite different when you see the dctl saturation and when you see uh, for example the curve saturation it's not at all the same so of course uh, this saturation is way over the top just like for me to show you like how it works but for example, I want to have actually this saturation on uh, my uh, machines, but then like it affects everything. So what do I do? Um, I can use this um, slider called Deep. So uh, Stefan did this slider uh, for you to don't affect the highlights. So when I uh, raise my Deep, my highlights get recovered because uh, no saturation will come to my highlights 
and I keep actually the saturation that I wanted for my red reds. So if you see, this is before the saturation node and this is after. So like, as you can see, like the, the reds is uh, stronger and deeper. So this slider is actually amazing because it really permits you to bring more out of your image. So also this is what is very interesting with these DCTLs is like you can go way beyond what Resolve uh, is proposing you to do with uh, its tool. The DCTLs are also uh, taking from the GPU to uh, maximize actually uh, your colors. And we're gonna finish our look with um, some density. So this is uh, actually the star of uh, the DCTL. Like um, everyone is talking about the density uh, DCTL from uh, Mononode. <laughs> so uh, let's let's just like uh, experiment with it. So I'm just gonna call it density. So um, let's just take our red density and uh, go down. And I really like what it does because uh, for the machine, like we are getting way more intense and um, we have like this depth that is uh, being created. But you see like um, if I uh, go uh, over, everything gets um, impacted, right? But what is nice is like even in the density DCTL, we have a deep slider. So then like if I put my deep slider uh, like at 100%, then I can just affect my um, machines, which is actually pretty interesting. Perfect. Okay. So uh, let's see, let's compare actually without the... Um, uh, DCTL. So without the DCTL, we went from uh, this image. So this is only my balance, uh, my skin and uh, my uh, HDR. And uh, with the DCTL, we could uh, pop out more colors and also separate the colors that are around, which also uh, makes me feel that I um, uh, brought back actually the soul uh, of uh, the set that was uh, during that was here during the shoot. Yeah, I really like it because it was uh, so easy actually to create an image that is uh, deeper and that have a bit more soul uh, going on. So that's all for me, guys. Uh, this was my uh, little tutorial, just like to show you how powerful are these DCTLs. This video is not at all sponsored. I just like took the DCTLs and tried it myself and I found it like so good that I asked Stefan like just to describe me a bit more about his process and about um, what he had in mind when he uh, built it. So if you want to try these DCTLs, you have um, a free version on uh, the website uh, that you can uh, try there's watermarks on it for sure but uh, at least you can have an idea and play with it uh, just to see if you are ready to invest in it um, for me like if you want my uh, advice uh, this is a great investment to have because um, if you have this in your toolkit uh, you can get uh, this kind of look very fast and uh, pretty easily in just few clicks Guys, uh, I hope you're having a great week or a great weekend and I see you next time.